Hi, this is Marcel of Marcel on Tech and today I'm talking about the Honor 70. This is a brand new mid-range phone that has surprised me in some regards and actually quite annoyed me in other ways as well. It's an excellent value device, but it's not perfect, okay? Let's have a little look. Okay, let's get into it. So we are looking at the Honor 70 which of course Honor is an offshoot of the Huawei company, no longer apparently parent owned by it, but still very much uh, running similar operating systems and obviously designs as well as to many of the other Huawei phones. Uh, so to look at this from front to back and the sides, so the design and build, if you can see here, this is a very narrow device, really, really thin and slim in the hands. As you can see, these side bezels are very wafer thin because the screen rolls off the side in this kind of waterfall or infinity as they refer to it in many different pl or, uh, other plans or phones. Uh, whereas this effect here where it rolls off the edges, I actually really do like. Now, some people don't like uh, curved screens. I do. Um, I really find them very immersive and this panel is absolutely fantastic. Um, this device only weighs 178 grams. It's super duper light. As you can see on this right side, we've got the volume rocker, very narrow, and the power button there as well. If we go underneath, we've got one bottom firing speaker. Now this is not particularly good because you don't get any sound out the top. So if you're holding the device, watching any YouTube or anything like that in this configuration, if you cover that up, there is almost no sound whatsoever. So that unfortunately is a bit sad because there's only one downward firing speaker. We've then got uh, the USB Type-C, obviously, and the SIM tray there, which does cater for dual SIM, which is important, but no expandable memory. Uh, this one has on board 256 memory, uh, as well as the eight gigs of RAM as well. Now, it is uh, a very good looking device, as I say, very tall, very long. Um, if you're used to that sort of shape, which is obviously the slab of glass, as you can see here, it's a very long looking device, which makes viewing angles really good this way around. Um, but obviously that makes it quite long in the pocket as well. So it does definitely sit quite deep in your pocket when you've got it tucked away. Um, now on the reverse side, we've also got some uh, Gorilla Glass here with this really nice frosted green color. Uh, there are two others, there's a black color and a diamond cut uh, pearlescent white color as well that is really cool. It's actually quite hard to come by. Uh, but they do look really cool. Now, if you look at the camera bumps, they're quite odd, quite unique in that they're both circular. But if you take a closer look, what we're looking at here is effectively, obviously the camera lenses here, the three lenses. Now, these cameras are in fact uh, 54 and 50 megapixel cameras. So you've got the regular angle where, uh, lens as well as the wide angle lens, which are very high resolution of 50 megapixels. But we also have the Sony IMX 800, which is using the Honor Image Engine, which is actually a AI processing system. Now this is the only non-flagship item, flagship item from uh, Honor that actually utilizes that uh, software, which is really, really cool. So surprisingly good, um, really, really powerful, and very, very good in daylight. Uh, does slightly begin to fall apart in, uh, in late night shots, evening shots, which is very, very common, uh, but it is something that is unavoidable in the mid ranges, but it does perform incredibly well in the daytime in good light. Um, when it does work, it works really, really nicely and surprisingly good for the price that we're dealing with here as well. Now we do have um, 4,800 milliamp battery, which is fantastic and really impressive considering the size of this device being so narrow and so slim. Um, and it also comes with a quick charger in the box. So in the box comes a 66 watt uh, charging device. Uh, brick, which is really, really handy, and it does charge and gives you almost 50% in about 20 minutes, which is an absolute bonus and really, really handy. It does come with a built-in screen protector. I like to keep my screen protectors on uh, because I think the manufacturer ones are often the best, 
and obviously when it starts to wear and tear you can replace them but the fingerprint the uh, screen protector is there and super handy to have now one of the weaknesses of this device it does have very sloppy haptics if you are typing away uh, you can activate or deactivate whether or not the keyboard has uh, a haptic feedback and it does have uh, an act haptic feedback on this if you choose to but it is really sloppy it's one of those devices unfortunately that just does not they haven't they clearly have saved money on using um, a very low or weak it kind of feels like it's doing it by mistake um, it doesn't really want to vibrate and certainly not in in the same way that the nothing phone was really really good with its haptics or iPhones have got excellent haptics as well um, this one is very uh, weak and even sometimes if I have it just on um, on the desk and it's vibrating for a notification or a phone call I won't even know because the vibration is incredibly mild so it's not the best uh, the vibration motor in this is clearly where they save money but you know you win some you lose some now when the device first came along it came along with a number of games already pre uh, pre-installed uh, games I'm not going to play so they have already been deleted which is straightforward to do it just makes the process a little bit slower to set it up because annoyingly uh, they've already got pre-installed games which are not of any interest to me um, however I did install a couple of games that I do like for example race the sun graphically looks really really good um, and was was a, a pleasure to actually play on um, as well as uh, Forge of Neon which is a great game and this fluid um, application which I've spoken about before looks absolutely fantastic on the AMOLED screen as well huge fan of this app which is really clever and really utilizes all the colors the smooth now one of the things I was really impressed with was uh, the calibration settings when uh, connecting to uh, Bluetooth with headphones. Now there are some special functions that I have been really surprised with. So I have got some very budget earphones here that I just use to throw around at my office uh, in my treatment clinic. And they have never really been anything to write home about. They're called Enac Fire G20s. Um, and they are just good for playing basic music uh, or listening to audio tracks when I'm at work. EQ system where you can have auto where obviously it affects depending on the audio that you're playing or 3D audio which allows you to adjust obviously the field of immersive listening and it's very effective surprisingly despite the fact that these are budget earphones uh, it's really really good and then we've got these 3D sound effects where we can have the near front wide and grand and this actually works you can literally hear the differences as if the sound were very near to your ear or if it were directly in front of you it's a very clever piece of software that i was really surprised with actually um, and a redeeming feature for this device because i've not seen that being used before and it's called honor hissen which is a weird name uh, as opposed to uh, headphones it would probably work even better so it is really very surprising uh, in terms of the quality of the Bluetooth. Now, one area that I did want to draw special attention to was the uh, camera and the functionality of the camera, whereupon there is a surprising amount that can be done. Obviously, you've got the wide angle lens, you've got the regular one time X, two time X, and then of course you have digital zoom as well which is okay, but you've got a lot of features here ranging from aperture, which allows you to obviously focus or put on your focal point uh, so that the background is blurred, as you can see here. This is my focal point here. And then you've got night shot here. I'll put up some images uh, in the background here so you can see for yourself. We've got some portrait functionality as well with beauty and bokeh effects being adjustable, uh, and it does work very well. But one of the things that I'm very impressed with is this. This is a multi-camera function, which is where you can see the rear camera facing me and the camera facing out. And that allows you to obviously be very, very good for vlogging and blogging. So it's a very, very clever system. And one of the things that I was really keen on is this solo cut, which is a very, very clever camera system, which allows you to select an individual. And I'll put an example up now allow me to do some degree of motion tracking on a particular subject 
Keep the figure within four meters in front of the camera. Tapping the track frame generates an additional motion track video. So you're recording a video as you normally would in landscape like this. And this is Jack walking back and forth, snapping his fingers. It's really actually kind of terrifying to be honest. This is the clip as it was happening. And it's easy to understand. Yeah, okay, you shot it in landscape, you ended up with a landscape video, but I didn't move the camera at all to follow him. But with the solo cut with the motion tracking, what you end up with is a usable portrait video that you can post to stories. And it's from the same original video clip, but there's no extra work or editing afterwards. It's gonna keep the subject of the video in the center of the frame so that it can immediately be used in places where you would post portrait. Now, what is useful is that in the box comes a little uh, phone rubber, if you will, which is that it will offer protection for the rear of the phone, which is Gorilla Glass. Uh, but it is definitely something that I would imagine would definitely shatter if you were to drop it. So you do get a fairly cheap and standard uh, case here or condom case as a tech expert would say uh, which offers plenty of adequate protection both for the camera bumps here because they are cut out um, as well as the corners as well so it's pretty basic but you definitely would want that on there it also improves with grip as well so it does make a huge difference I Something that does annoy me about the software of this Honor 70 is this search. This is a very aggressive uh, search system created by Honor themselves, which allows you to uh, search for things online as well as your apps. Uh, but I find that instead of it being useful for uh, notifications, which is what I want to pull down, I have to reach all the way to the top of the screen in order to do that. If I do it from the middle, then I come up with this search window and I don't want to use this because this forces me to see lots of other things. So if I were to type in uh, an app, then it might come up with an app quicker. Uh, but I find that this is not particularly efficient for me. And what with my uh, habit being to pull down from the middle of the screen, I can't then swipe it away for some reason. Doing that doesn't allow you to swipe it away, which is really annoying. You have to press, you have to swipe sideways and even then it does it aggressively. So that's really annoying. However, on the software side, some of the quirks that are really handy or some of the uh, unique magic UI uh, software items that are quite useful is this, which is similar to the side panels in Samsung. So whereby you press and hold, you can actually bring in a side panel of quick access apps, which is very useful actually. And if you're used to Samsung in particular with the side panel, this is a very, very useful function, which uh, I've actually got the hang of quite quickly. And you can use this um, quite quickly and easily and it will pop up very, very nicely. The other software aspect that I rather like the look of is the fact that you can do uh, little pop-ups here. So if I wanted to um, have this as a quick window, I can have this as a window here that is movable, but at the same time, I can swipe it to the side and you can see how it's a bit glitchy. It doesn't always work. There we go. And you can swipe to the side and now I have a bubble and I have a bubble that I can move from side to side. If I want to uh, have quick access to it, I can do the same with WhatsApp, for example, or a messaging service. And it just tucks away into the corner there. And then when I want to wake it up, I can just tap on it, bring it forward, and it opens up the little window. If I drag down, it opens up into a full screen there like that. So it is quite useful. Um, that's quite a, a unique thing that um, the Magic UI has, which is quite nice. So that was quite unique and a clever usage of uh, Android 12 as well. So in conclusion, this device is surprisingly good value for money at about 500 euros, depending on, and you might even be able to pick it up cheaper like I did, having found one second hand. And as always, of course, I would recommend that you use a refurbished or second hand site like Amazon Warehouse, refurb.com or Black Market in order to find devices like this, which are perfectly good, perfectly uh, workable, but at a much cheaper price that allows for recyclable as well. So in conclusion, 
This is a little bit of an odd foam to hold in terms of it being quite narrow at the edges, despite the fact that I quite like that. The power and volume rocker are super duper uh, narrow. They actually remind me of the, the Note 10, the Samsung Note 10, uh, which is very, very similar. Um, but it has a fantastic screen, absolutely brilliant, 6.67 inches in height. I would really credit the biometrics. The face unlock in particular is really quick. Uh, I often find that phones struggle with finding the right angle, but this one seems to pick it up really, really well. Uh, there are some finicky parts in it that really annoy me, uh, but the fast charging is an absolute bonus. Uh, the pre-installed rubbish is a bit annoying, but otherwise they can obviously be deleted. And like I said before, the uh, OS, is a bit clunky, it's a bit cartoonish. I don't find it very mature, uh, but that's common of the Chinese market uh, OS yes. Magic UI 6. Never used it before, not a huge fan of it, but it is running on top of Android 12, um, and it has a couple of useful twer uh, quirks, as I showed you already uh, in the walkthrough as well, which are quite useful as well. So overall, um, I'd give this a B, as it's a mid-ranger, it's not a flagship, but the screen is a saving grace and those cameras definitely have some real quality to them. In particular, uh, the solo cut camera uh, trick that is very, very good at focusing on the individual uh, despite the movement across, as you saw. So uh, really quite impressed uh, with the camera itself. Could be better in low light. As always, low light is a huge challenge for most phones. Um, it really is only the flagships that master it, but this one is really, really good. So like I said, you can find these on uh, refurbished sites. Do consider that. If you're thinking about buying one of these, let me know, uh, put a comment below. If you've enjoyed the video, I'd love to hear your comments. If you've got any questions about this device, let me know if you want it compared to something else. And as always, of course, like and subscribe, and you'll see me very, very soon in the next video. Hopefully something exciting coming up soon. Peace.